And the public sector is being feather bedded at the same point, as you say, more money being poured in. It's a two-tier economy, Jacob. That's that's that was what we're seeing. If you're in the public sector, you know, not only are you getting big pay rises, but most of the public sector organisations are being cushioned from these rises by national insurance, by promises of more money, or indeed more money now. If you're in the private sector or if you're just an individual, a farmer, a pensioner, there's no cushioning at all. In fact, you'll see your bills go up. And if you're paying taxes, you'll see your taxes pay up. Uh, and if you're trying to pass on wealth to the next generation, Labour will help themselves to a slice of that too. For years, Britain has struggled with the gap between the haves and the have-nots. Andrew Griffith, the shadow business secretary, brought this into sharp focus recently. Speaking on GB News, he raised concerns about what he called a growing two-tier economy. According to him, Labour's leadership has made this divide worse, especially with their autumn budget. Griffith pointed out how Labour's policies seem to favour public sector workers, giving them more financial support while leaving others, like small business owners and private sector employees, struggling with higher costs and taxes. His main argument the government is ignoring the people who actually drive the economy. By focusing too much on public sector comforts, he warned, we risk creating a society where only a few get ahead. Meanwhile, everyone else has to deal with rising living expenses and an ever-growing tax burden. Griffith doesn't pull any punches in pointing out the growing divide in Britain's economy. He highlights how public sector workers seem to be sitting pretty with generous pay hikes thanks to changes like national insurance breaks and extra government funding. But for private sector workers, farmers, and retirees, it's a different story. They're dealing with rising taxes, soaring bills, and even tougher inheritance rules. Griffith warns that Labour's approach to targeting wealth building isn't just harsh, it's a recipe for disaster. Punishing people trying to secure their future might cost Labour the trust of voters they desperately need. Labour's latest budget came wrapped in promises of fairness, but the reality feels very different. It rolled out tax hikes like higher national insurance for employers, tighter rules on capital gains and inheritance, and tweaks to income tax brackets. The catch. Fiscal drag. It quietly pushes more people into higher tax brackets without actually increasing their paychecks. Small business owners and everyday wealth builders feel abandoned by policies that seem to stifle ambition and growth. Griffith believes this short-sighted strategy could trap Britain in a cycle of mediocrity instead of pushing for innovation. Worst of all, it risks leaving the UK lagging behind in a fiercely competitive global economy. Griffith didn't hold back when talking about Labour's stance on welfare reform. He pointed out that Britain spends a staggering £100 billion a year on welfare, yet there's little effort to make it work smarter. His message wasn't about cutting help for those who need it, but making sure the system actually encourages people to work, not sit on the sidelines. According to him, the current setup is unsustainable, with working-age people opting out of jobs and putting even more pressure on already stretched public funds. Griffith also took aim at Labour's approach to managing the economy, which he called a tax-and-spend playbook. He warned that this mindset is pushing Britain closer to a per capita recession, where economic growth just can't keep up with population demands. The problem. Labour's focus on quick political wins, like raising taxes and ramping up spending, leaves future generations stuck footing the bill. Griffith described this as fiddling the fiscal rule, prioritizing short-term fixes over real solutions. For him, it's about creating policies that encourage businesses to invest, boost productivity, and set the country up for long-term success. Griffith made a strong case for why wealth creation is key to Britain's future. He stressed how crucial entrepreneurs, small businesses, and innovators are for driving economic growth. But Labour's policies, he said, seem to punish success instead of encouraging it. With higher taxes on capital gains and tough inheritance tax rules, the message is clear. If you work hard and succeed, you'll pay for it. Griffith pushed back on this, calling for policies that celebrate innovation and reward effort. To him, a strong private sector is the backbone of the economy. And if it crumbles, Britain's future is in trouble. Griffith also zeroed in on Britain's housing crisis, which Labour's budget seems to have made worse. He criticised their approach arguing that raising taxes on landlords and adding more regulations only shrinks the supply of rental homes, 
making them more expensive. Instead of these heavy-handed tactics, Griffith called for big changes, increasing housing supply, speeding up planning approvals, and attracting private investment. He framed the housing crisis as a snapshot of labor's larger economic problem, a focus on quick fixes with no real long-term strategy. Griffith didn't mince words about education and skills development. He called out labor for neglecting these vital areas, arguing that they're the foundation of a strong and competitive economy. Instead of investing in long-term growth, Griffith said, labor is too focused on quick fixes and redistribution. The problem? It leaves Britain unprepared to tackle global challenges. He stressed the need to arm workers with the skills they'll need for industries like tech and green energy, warning that without this focus, Britain risks falling behind while others take the lead. Griffith's core message was simple. Britain needs honesty and ambition in how it handles the economy. He wasn't just blaming labor either. He thinks politicians across the board shy away from tough conversations about the country's financial problems. For him, the answer lies in bold changes, slimming down the public sector, making welfare work better, and crafting policies that reward hard work and innovation. His vision an economy where anyone can succeed, not just those lucky enough to be in protected jobs or industries. Andrew Griffith's warning hits home for a lot of people. The two-tier economy he's talking about isn't just a buzzword. It's what millions of Brits are living every day. As Labour stands by its budget, the real challenge for the opposition is to come up with a plan that people can actually get behind. Griffith's criticism may be harsh, but at its core, it's a push for better leadership. He's calling for policies that bring people together, rebuild trust, and create a fairer, more balanced Britain. The big question, will Labour take this seriously or stick to their guns? Either way, the conversation Griffith started is one that Britain can't afford to ignore. If you found this video interesting, please like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.